lo loved our fight uh, when we went down 16 there. We uh, went to a small line of the guys really um, and, and, you know, when you miss 11 for 26 from the free throw line, that could really deflate you and, and play games with your, with your head. And I felt like our guys still competed on the defensive end. They still rebounded. That's a sign of a very good team. But on the offensive end, we got work to do. We got work to do. Um, I thought our execution was good. I thought some of our shots were good. We're going to move Lamar around a little bit more. He's got three and four guys on him. Um, but I like the direction we're headed in. We're uh, a few points away from being 8-0. Um, so we're going to learn from these experiences, and we're going to get better. It was a chance to tie or win the game and missing all those free throws. Um, so I'm going to remain optimistic and very positive. Pat, uh, two quick things. Could you put your finger on anything with the free throws, or were guys just missing them? Just missing. And I, I wish I had some clever answer for you. I don't. And, and you guys, the last couple of years, have been very good out of timeouts. I think you had three turnovers in the second half out of timeouts, including the last one. What was not working for you? Yeah, there? just, you know, it's guys getting used to each other. You know, taking care of the details, taking care of the simple things. And, uh, we have been good at timeouts. And we, we you, DePaul, we, had a, we ran a very similar play than tonight. Um, you know, give Indiana credit. They did a great job. Archie did a great job. He got, you know, um, Langford was terrific in the first half. We did a better job on him in the second half. I thought their point guard really stepped up. He was the deciding factor in the game. And what were you looking for out of that last timeout just to get it to Lamar and have him create? Yeah, it was really. Um, kind of a decoy with Mike, and a lot of guys went with him, including the inbound defender, which was Langford. And I just thought we had a good chance to get Lamar on a, on a smaller guy without so much congestion in the paint, because DePaul, there was two guys on him. So I wanted to try to get him some space or on a smaller guy. And we did that. We just, you know, we, didn't, we got to throw the ball. You know, It's pressure situations, and we're going to learn from them. And, you know, this experience is only going to help us. Pat, it seems like uh, the volume of shots that you guys are taking is relatively high, not just this game, but the past few games. What What's the issue or the challenge uh, in getting more of those shots to fall? You, you've been stuck at 60. Yeah, yeah. Keep shooting with confidence. These guys are getting in here. You know, the game's going to slow down for them. They're going to know where they are. I tried to really simplify for this game so they weren't thinking so much about you know, cuts or screens, or we tried to simplify a little bit. So we'll, we'll continue to simplify so they can see the ball in the basket. When you, when you grade the tape on a game like this, how do you grade out younger guys that are just going to have these ups and downs because they're so young, but at the same time sort of anticipating uh, a certain efficiency you'd like them to have? I thought the freshmen were terrific. I thought they were really good. Uh, they did a lot of good things out there. Um, Penn State basketball has a bright future with these guys, for sure. And I was really proud of Jamari Wheeler, too. I took him out of the starting lineup. I thought he handled himself really well. He goes out and gets eight rebounds. I, I thought that was important to, to show the younger guys that, hey, it's okay, we, we're out here to win. But you're right, there's going to be some inconsistencies, and we're going to have to live with them. Pat, how would you characterize, Becker, the uh, offense's identity through the first eight games, and what's the biggest area that needs to grow? Well, um, we were 9 of 28 on layups. We were 5 for 21 on threes. And I think we're taking pretty good ones. I think everybody's just got to take it, you know, exhale. I think we're getting really good shots. We're getting stops. I mean, we turned them over 16 times. The problem is we're only getting 16 points off those turnovers. Maryland, we turned them over 17 times. We only got 18 points. We need to take those turnovers, and they need to be baskets. They need to be points. So I can't criticize our offense. I think our offense is fine. We just got to see the ball go through the basket and keep moving Lamar around. But we need consistency from the second and third leading scorers. Pat, uh, obviously 0-2 in conference play is a tough way to start Big Ten play. Is there any benefit in getting back into the non-conference now before your next Big Ten game when you guys head to Michigan? Yeah, it's good to see where you are. It's good to see what we need to work on um, in practice to be the best team we can be by the end of the year. So uh, whether we were one on one, zero and two, or two and zero, I would feel the same way. We're going to gauge, break down the film, see what, what our weaknesses are, and, and continue to work on them as we approach Colgate. Obviously, Josh had a nice first half at, at Maryland, but is is he is are his issues playing trying to play perfect? Are they compounding uh, at this point? 
Yeah, he's just got to he's got to just go out and play with Josh Reeves basketball stat sheet stuff or play with confidence, shoot with confidence. Um, you know, he wants it so badly. You know, and I want it for him. Uh, but he's just got to take a again, exhale, settle down a little bit, let the game come to you, continue to be Josh Reeves on the defensive end and rebound and, and stealing and things of that nature. On the offensive end, just play with incredible confidence. Seems like. Good. Uh, by the uh, under 12 timeout in the first half, Indiana had only scored four <coughs> points, but at the same time, you guys were only up by six. Do you think that you didn't make the most of Indiana's slow start shooting the ball? Well, I, I would say no, because we missed a bunch of free throws. We should have been up a larger margin. Um, we kind of let them in the game. We let them stay in the game where we should have had a commanding lead. And, and again, give Indiana credit, they, they stayed with what they were doing, they stuck with it, and, and they, they got the win. You guys have had a lot of offensive rebounds, multiple offensive rebounds in single possessions some of these games this year, but maybe not the second chance points necessarily that you would see off of that. Have you liked the possessions you've had out of those sort of multiple possession moments, or is it just a matter of sometimes it just doesn't go in? Yeah, I, I do like what we're running, I do like the shots that we're taking, um, what we're we're tailbacking, we're, we're going to the to glass, we're, we're getting extra possessions, but we're coming up short, obviously, only 15 offensive rebounds and 10 second chance points. We've got to turn that rebound into two or kick out for threes. And right now they're not going. They will. They'll go. Pat, you mentioned the lack of points that you're getting off the turnovers that you're creating. Do you think, and you mentioned the missed layups as well, do you think that is has an effect on maybe the missed free throws where you're not able to get some momentum that you're looking for off a potential layup on a fast break that comes from a turnover? we got to keep doing what we're doing. You know, we're putting ourselves in, a, in position to win a lot of games, and this team's going to be really good. Just keep doing what we're doing. We're defending, we're rebounding. It's all going to come together. The pieces all are going to come together, and this team is going to be really exciting to watch. I, I want to just mention the student section. They were awesome. I could barely talk in huddles. My voice is killing me right now because they were so loud. So I appreciate them coming out. Just 11 minutes for Mike tonight. Where is he at physically right now, or is it just him trying to get reacclimated to uh, getting into a rhythm? Yeah, it's a good word. We're, we're trying to get him reacclimated. It's going to be a game-to-day, day-to-day process. Um, and I'm going to kind of read it and see where he is, and we'll get him a little bit more work each day. And, um, it, he would have gotten more minutes. We were down 16. I had to go a little bit smaller and, and kind of speed up the tempo a little bit. Uh, Pat, you mentioned Rasier getting the start over Jamari. Was, what's the thought process behind that? Is, he, is Rasier your starting point guard moving forward? Uh, for right now, um, <laughs> analytically, uh, we just were assisting on more plays on the offensive end. Um, nothing that Jamari did. Jamari's been fantastic, absolutely fantastic, uh, spearheading our defense. Uh, but I, I felt like we just needed an adjustment felt like uh, we needed some space out there. And um, and I think, you know, Rob, he's earned it. He's done a nice job of uh, you know, playing uh, beyond his years. Pat, back here, you guys have played uh, two early games now against the Big Ten. Do you feel like it's a leg up compared to other teams around college basketball that don't get this early conference experience? I do. I think it really helps you. Like I, I stated just earlier, it, it tells you where you are. It tells you what you need to work on. It prepares you for January. And then going into the next few weeks, into the holiday, you know, we got things to work on. we got things to adjust. we got things to correct. But the positives, it's all correctable. Um, but I think the exposure that the Big Ten's getting, I think these games have all, for the most part, been one possession games, really, really close games. Um, I, I think the Big Ten's getting exactly what they want as far as exposure uh, for our league. Hey, you mentioned Rasier um, and hit what he's doing for the off team on offense. Um, is part of putting him in the starting lineup his just his ability to create off the dribble and attack the basket? Because it seems like that's something that has been missing from this team, whereas from last year with Tony, where if it's getting late in the shot clock, he can attack the basket and be his man off the dribble. Yeah, I feel like Jamari can do that as well, but Ra's doing a nice job off of ball screens in offense. So I just wanted to shuffle, you know, shake it up a little bit. And, and you know what? We needed a little more pop off the bench, and I think Jamari gave us that little pop, little spark. The only last question. It seems like when you guys needed a three-pointer, like your three-point guys are all three of them are freshmen. Is that 
tough to ask of them in, you know, in games like these when maybe you need a big shot to have that shot yeah, and take a big shot like that? Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and that's what, but we all have confidence in them. The, those, those kids live in the gym. We have confidence in them. You know, we want we got to get Lamar going from beyond the arc. We got to get Josh going from beyond the arc. Those two guys in our NIT run, we're shooting uh, one was shooting over 50, one was shooting over 40. Uh, so we need to get those guys back on.